Well, open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians 1. It's good to be in church on a Sunday morning, isn't it? Verse 10. We've been talking when I've been speaking about together and agreement and unity and, and all kinds of good things. Amen. And God's been showing us some good stuff. How many know it's important for the body of Christ to be one? Yes. Not to be fragmented. There's too many fragmented things out there in the world today, you know, that, that try to come together at times, but they come together as individuals. You know, there's certain sports that I don't even watch anymore because it's, the, it's a team sport that individuals are trying to get all the glory for. Amen? Yep. How many know that uh, church is a team sport? Right? It, we are, we are, be, we are be, we're fitly joined together by the Father to do good works. Amen? We're put in specific spots and specific places to be who God called us to be. And, and therefore, together is the best way for us to be. Amen? 1 Corinthians 1 verse 10 says, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing. You know, that's what we just did right there at the offering, right? Yeah. We all spoke the same thing. Now, if in your heart you had faith, then we were together speaking the same thing. Yeah. You know, you can mimic something or you can say the same thing. With your heart, you can speak the very same thing together. Amen? If you believe that what you're saying is the will of God and everyone's saying that together, then you just spoke the same thing. Right? It's, this isn't copying. This is saying the same thing with your heart. Amen? How many ever confessed Jesus Christ as Lord? You said the same thing that everybody else said to get Jesus to be Lord of your life. We spoke the same thing. Amen? And he says in the church, in the body of believers, that speaking the same thing is is paramount because if you're not, there's divisions among you. Amen? Do you like that word, paramount? Look at that. I'm telling you. I got, I'm going to put that on my calendar. And that's my word for the week. Somebody's going to come in and say, Dave, should we do this? I'm going to say, it's paramount that we do that. <laughs> See, I'm getting a hold of this English thing. When we're not speaking the same thing, there can be divisions among us. There can be, we, we got, the, the division by division doesn't just mean that, it's, it doesn't mean you're in strife. It means you have two visions. It, you've got more than one vision. It's not necessarily strife, but division can cause strife. As you notice, when you go to people of other denominations and you don't believe what they believe or they don't believe what you believe, you, you, you find if you start talking about that, which you don't have to talk about that, by the way, Right? Somebody don't believe in speaking in tongues, you don't got to convince them that they're wrong. Right? How many, how many know, not my job to convince them that they're wrong or right? Right? God's. God's job. Our job is to love them, just like their job is to love us. Right? Even when we're unlovely. Huh? How many know, if we decide to do it that way, we, we take away the division... We take away any chance for strife, and we, and we involve love, which is unfailing. Amen? Anytime you involve love, you now have an unfailing source at work in the situation, and they have a much better chance of receiving from the Lord what He wants them to have than they would have if you'd argued. Right? Arguing doesn't cause the Word of God to come forth. Or the will of God. That we all speak the same thing, that there be no divisions among us, that there not be two and three and five visions, that everybody not say, I don't really like the way he sees it. This is the way I see it. Let's go start another church if I see it this way. <laughs> right? I want the church if I see it this way, you go to the church if I saw it that way, and you go to the church as I'm going to see it how I want. <laughs> you got three churches, three visions. And none of them are God's. You know what God's vision is? That we all speak the same thing. That's God's vision. People say, I don't see how that could happen. <laughs> Nothing's too big for God. Right? It's not a matter of what we can see or what we can't see. This is God's will. If God says it can happen, it can happen. Amen? We can all speak the same thing. You know, I was talking to somebody one time years ago when I first started teaching Bible studies. And uh, they were arguing with me about, and I, and I was very young, so I was arguing back. 
And, uh, you know, I wanted people to know God was good if I had to beat them up to get them to hear it. You know, God's good. Now, you get it in you. And they started talking about they believe this and they believe that. And, and I said, well, you know, there's just lots of things that we don't believe the same. And God said, no, there's lots of things that you do believe the same. And if you'd focus on those things, you'd get rid of the arguing that you're doing right now. Right? Churches believe in the blood of Jesus Christ. They believe in salvation. There's many things that we believe alike. There's many things that we can say the same thing about. Amen? So if we'd focus on those things, then we'd go a lot further. Amen? Glory to God. That wasn't even in there. It's just free. Where'd that verse go? There it is. <laughs> that there be no divisions among you. And if there's no divisions among you, but he, he, he's saying that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined. When you don't have divisions, you're now perfectly joined. Perfectly joined is not all in the same place, dressed the same way, right? That's perfectly joined is two opposite parts that connect. Amen? Perfectly joined. Tell you what, give me my flashlight. I'm a little early for my flashlight. But yeah, that's right. We got props right here. Perfectly joined is the top of this flashlight to the threads of this flashlight. That's perfectly joined. If you want to be perfectly joined, you be your part. Right? You be your part. Like if these threads say, I don't want to be threads, then we can't be perfectly joined. Why? Because I have to have threads to join this to this. Right? So it doesn't matter what you wanted to be, it's what you are. If you decide not to be that, then all you're doing is being a hindrance and a division. Why? Because your vision's different than what God saw who you were. Right? God, God said you're threads and you're the cap and when you guys get to perfectly joined, you make this work. Amen? So, to be perfectly joined together is not just, it's kind of like when they said they were all in one place together. They weren't just all in one place, they were together. Right? There's a difference in being perfectly joined and all in the same place. We can, you could have a whole bunch of people all in the same place that are not joined at all. Right? right? They could be there to argue. You ever been like in a town hall meeting or something like that when something bad's going on, man? They're, that's all they're there for is to argue. They're there to be divisive. When we come together, we should not be together to be divisive. Yeah. I remember when I first uh, started coming back to church. So, you know, it's been a lot of years ago. I've been back in church at least five, ten minutes now. <laughs> <laughs> Several years ago, yeah. I was in a full gospel church, and God said, I want you to go to this church with your family. And uh, so we, I thought, well, God, that's an odd choice. Why would you send me to that church? That's, you know, that's not what uh, I believe necessarily. They believe what, what I believe, but they didn't believe, how would I put that? As much as I, <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't believe everything I believed. How about that? They probably believed some things I didn't believe that, you know, I'm sure I was wrong in a lot of places. How many, how many know you ain't got it all? Right? And, they, and, and I was high-minded to even think that way. Why would I go to that church? Because they don't know everything I know, God. <laughs> Did you ever wonder in Romans 12 too, where it says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, the very next verses talk about being members one of another. Huh? It talks about being part of the body of Christ. Because we're going to have to renew our mind. And it, the very next verse after that actually says, be not high-minded. Right? Don't think more highly of yourself than you ought. Why? Because you can't think more highly of yourself than you ought and be a, a part of anybody. Right? It's not possible. You think more highly of yourself. People that think more highly of themselves are the little lamb that's out by themselves that the wolves are about to get. Right? Because they know more. Uh, you guys stay in the flock. That's fine. I see the good grass right over here and I know more than you. What they know is they're about to be lamb chop. <laughs> right? Christians that separate themselves and pull themselves out by themselves are in danger. They're the ones whom he may devour. Yeah. They'll say, well, there's not a good church in my... Go to it and you'll make it a good church. 
If you'll be a good person, go to that church, you can add to it and take from it. They know something you don't know. They have something you don't have, and you have something they don't have. You're the threads, right? They're the cap. Go where you're supposed to be. <laughs> Not where you think you're supposed to be. When he said do that, we went there, but what I found myself doing was I would sit in service and I would critique the pastor. I'd say, ah, that's not right. He's reading that verse totally wrong. By the time it was over, God said, well, you just as well not came. He said all kinds of good things and you got nothing. That'd be, that'd be like going to a buffet and they got all this good meat and, and potatoes and then you see the broccoli. And you say, they got broccoli, I'm not going. You missed out on the meat and potatoes because all you saw was the broccoli. <laughs> or maybe you liked the broccoli and didn't go because they had meat and potatoes. I need to pray for you, we're going to have a line. <laughs> but whatever it was that offended you, that kept you away from being there, is the very thing that you were wrong about, and your wrong will not create a right. Right? And your rightness of mind will not create a right. You could be right about what you believe and wrong about the way you feel, so you now are wrong about the whole thing. Right? right? If you go about right the wrong way, it ain't going to work. Amen? He said he wants us to be perfectly joined. Amen? In, sa in the same mind and in the same judgment. So we're speaking the same thing, we've got the same mind, and we've got the same judgment. What's, your, what's our judgment? We're judging things the same way. We're judging the same way God judges. You're seeing the same way God sees. How many want to be, how many, how many want to be judged the way God judges? Right? He judges you righteous when you're not. Right? He judged you good enough to, to have Jesus die for you while you were His enemy. He judges pretty nicely. You know, I have a lot of people say, oh, don't do that. God will get you. God won't get you. God will help you. God don't get people. He saves people. Amen? Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Put my flashlight up for later. Now, go to Hebrews 10. He wants us to be perfectly joined. One of the ways that He perfectly joins the church is He has us gather together. Did you ever notice that, the book, that the, the, when Jesus taught, He normally taught to crowds of people. So when He said, you're the light of the world, He wasn't talking to one person. He was talking to those who believed in Him. They were the light. Glory to God. Not I'm the light, right? We all are the light. Glory to God. We make up the body of Christ. When Paul wrote, he wrote to the church in Ephesus. He wrote to the church. His writings are to churches. We, we look at the Bible and it is individual and it does speak to you as an individual, but it was written to bodies of believers. It, it, it is direction on how to be a part of the body. When he says to, to, when he, when, in 1 Corinthians 13, love, it is direction on how to be part of the body. Read 1 Corinthians 12 and you'll see that's what he's talking about. Being a member of the body. And it goes right in to 1, 1 Corinthians 13, which are the love verses. You can't be a part of the body, a, a successful part of the body, without operating in this love. Amen? He, he puts us to do things together. What did we do today together? We've confessed, we've sung, we've praised and worshipped God together. We didn't come here to worship Him individually. We came to worship Him as a body of believers, like-minded, right? Perfectly joined. Amen? He perfectly joins us together. And the good thing about Him is if you're walking in Him and doing the things, no matter where you're at, you're perfectly joined. You know what? This may not be your church, but this morning you're perfectly joined to us. Why? Because you fit. Why? Because you're my brother. You're my sister. Right? You're, you're, a part of this, you're a part of this body. Maybe not this church, but this body. Glory to God. Hebrews 10, verse 22. says, let us. Does it say let me? Let you. 
Let I? Let us. What's he saying? Let us. He says, everyone do this, the same thing. Everyone draw near. Everyone let us draw near with true hearts and full assurance of faith. Let us have our hearts sprinkled. Let us, me and you. Why? Because that makes us the same. I'm not the same part, but I got the same salvation. It, it makes us the same. It makes us part of the same body when, when, when us does something. Right? It says, let us do this. And in verse 23, what's it say again? Let us. What's he saying? Hold fast to our profession. They added the word, but it's a good word. Our profession. It's not your profession of faith. It's our profession of faith. My profession of faith for you is by whose stripes you were healed. Yours for me is the same thing. That's our profession of faith. We believe in the Word of God. And we believe it together. Our agreement, and I've said this before, but it's very important to remember, is not me agreeing with you and you agreeing with me. It's us agreeing with God. Amen? It's us agreeing with God. I don't, you don't have to agree with any of my goofy ideas. I don't have to agree with any of your goofy ideas. But we do agree together with God's because He don't have a goofy idea. Amen? He's just got truth and life. And when we see His Word together, we speak His Word together. And He's saying, let us hold fast to our profession, to the profession of our faith without wavering. Who, who's not wavering? Us isn't wavering. Guess what? If somebody in the middle, if you had a line of ten people and, the, and these, these four weren't wavering and these five weren't wavering, but this one in the middle, he was about to waver, he'd hit the one over here that wasn't. And then he'd go back this way and he'd hit the other one that wasn't. And he wouldn't waver. Why? Because he was together where he should have been and wavering became an impossibility. Amen? God puts us together for a reason, to love one another, to care for one another, to be a part of a body that will help one another. Amen? I don't want to step on any toes today, but we're to be a part of a body somewhere. And you have a part to play. Amen? For He, that he, for he is faithful that promised. Verse 24... And let us, let us what? Consider what? Someone else? <laughs> what in the world? You know what the world says right now? If you say, you know, this person really needs help. They say, you know, I got so many problems myself, I really couldn't help them. Christians should never say that. If you got the worst problem ever going on in your life, the best thing you can do is find someone to help. Someone else to consider. Don't consider yourself. Consider someone else. Right? Amen? Because that act of love is your way out. But you can't do it for that reason because you're still not... See, a lot of people say, well, yeah, I've got to do an act of love. I've got I to love someone so that I can get out of my problem. No, you're still doing it for you. You've got to love someone because you love someone. Right? We see a situation and the love of God is so strong in us that we're drawn to help them. Why? Because we love them, not because we need a way out. <laughs> yeah. It's like giving. You can't, you can't give for your way out unless you truly give. That's right. right? You could give, but if you give with, with an ul ulterior motive, then it's not a gift any longer. It's a trade. God didn't say trade with me. Right? right? He didn't say let's trade. He, he's not into barter. Right? He says give and it'll be given unto you. But he, he tells you, he, he's just speaking truth. That's the way he is. He could have left that it'll be given unto you off because it still would have happened because it's a principle of giving. He could have just said give and then it would have happened. Why? Because it is a principle of giving. It'll be given unto you. He's just telling you the results of giving. He's not telling you to do it to get the results of giving. He's telling you to be a giver and, get, and that'll happen. Amen? He said, let us consider one another. Not, not consider yourself. Consider one another. 
to provoke unto love. How do you consider somebody? You're not just going to somebody that's, that's up all the time. You're going to the person that's down. And say, hey, hey, whoa. You got the love of God in you, man. You don't know what God's got for you today. Get out of this attitude. Spur yourself on. Spur yourself on. You're going into the world today. You are the light. Be the light. Christians that look like this, the world's just going to hell in a handbasket. I got to go to work again today. My boss, meaner than a snake. I don't like it one bit. Jesus, come back today. Can you come back right now before I have to go to work? Because I got to go to work if you don't come back. And then I got to come home and I got bills to pay. I need you to come back. My family's mad at me. Can you please come back? He ain't coming back for that. You know it? <laughs> He's coming back for people who are spurring one another on to love and good works. That's the church He's coming back for. Amen? And that's what He's asked us to do. And then He tells you the easiest way to do it. Next verse. And <laughs> Don't forsake the assembling of yourself together. You know how to spur someone on? Be near them first. Right? Right? You know, last night I was watching the ball game. And I was screaming as loud as I could at the TV. You know how much of that they heard? You reckon it spurred any of them on? Why? Because I was not gathered together with them. Now there was 50 some odd thousand people gathered there with them, spurring them on. When we come together as a body of believers speaking the same thing, perfectly joined together, being the part that God created us to be, we spur one another on to love and good works. But you cannot forsake the assembling of yourself together. You know, right? right. Yeah, we got to go to meetings. Why? Because we're assembling together with people we don't get to see all the time. Right? right? Not just your own church. Right. People say, I go to church every Sunday and every Wednesday. That's enough for me. It ain't enough for God. He might want you to see somebody else in the body. Right? I had a friend here in the church that was in the hospital recently, and I said, well, you know, since you're in here, you might as well make it hard on the devil. He said, you know, you're right. I'm going to go to other rooms and pray with him. He went around and messed with other people in the hospital. Why not? The devil overplayed his hand. Put, he put the wolf in the hen house right there. <laughs> overplayed his hand. Put somebody that believes in the goodness of God around people who need to hear the goodness of God. What, what was I doing? Spurring him on to not think of where he was, but to consider others. Amen? That, that's what we do. We spur one another on to, and to consider others. Amen? And as we gather together, what, what if I hadn't been there to talk to him? Right? We wouldn't have been gathered together. I could have screamed it as loud as I wanted to from my house. He wouldn't have heard me. It wouldn't have been encouraging, and it wouldn't have done a good work. Amen? He said, don't give up this. Don't, don't forsake the assembling of yourself together as, a manner, as, as the manner of some is. King James, he talked really backwards, didn't he? Why didn't he just say something like, don't stop getting together. Right? Some people do that and it's not good for them. Look what happened. <laughs> right? <laughs> think, think about that. Think about the people you know that decided they don't need the body of Christ anymore. That them and God, two peas in a pod, don't need that. Don't need the body. Those people don't understand me. I got revelation they can't even imagine. <laughs> me and God are this close. I don't need the body. They don't believe what I believe. They don't believe anywhere close to what I believe. They can't believe what I believe. They haven't seen what I've seen. Besides that, that guy called me a name last week. I'm offended with him. Never want to go back to that church again. And I imagine all Christians are just like him. You know, you got, you got millions of people out of church because they imagine Christians are just like the one that, the one that they saw. And that one was just having a bad day or they would have hugged him. Amen? That is why it's important to have your hugging clothes on rather than your judging clothes. Right? <laughs> if you walk out with the uh, judgment robe on in the morning, 
walk back in and change. <laughs> right? Because you don't need the judgment robe, you need the love hug, the hug clothes, right? Don't, don't get something you can't hug people with, get something you can hug them with. Amen? So I don't want to get these all wrinkled, well go change them. Go change them because somebody's going to need a hug from you today. <laughs> not, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. You can't exhort one another and not be around one another. And you can't exhort one another if you're not doing all the other things that it said. What, you can't exhort somebody when they say, Ah, oh, man, I'm feeling bad. And you say, Oh, you're looking bad. <laughs> right? That is not your profession of faith. Just because they lost their profession is not time for you to lose your profession, right? Without wavering, you need to be the one that's on this side. And when he says, man, I don't feel good, you say, lean on me. Huh? And he, said, and he, he starts to lean on you, but he wants to check the guy over here on this side. And he says, I don't feel good. And that guy says, lean on me. And he can't waver. Why? Because you got him boxed in in the love of God. And you're exhorting him to do the things and say the things that God says about him and be who God says he is. Amen? And he's not going to get out. He's not going to get off. He's going to stay right there because he's leaning on you. Together, we can stand. When we're perfectly joined together, we can stand. People that are in a room together, they could all fall down and no one would catch each other. Why? They're not joined together. They're just in the same room. Amen? But we're joined together. We're joined together by the love of God. What's, what is common about me and you is that we both know God loves us. We don't need to know what else we know about God. We need to both know that we know God loves us. And that makes us common. That makes us family. That makes me brother and sister. That makes us perfectly joined. Amen? We'll fit together now. The rest of it, <laughs> right, is, is, is choices that we decide to make. Amen? We, we, we're now part of a body. Are we going to be the part God wants us to be? Right? He says, exhort one another, and so much the more, as you see the day approaching. Is the day approaching? Yes. Yeah, we better keep exhorting one another. Right? The division between light and dark is growing easier and easier to see. There's so much less gray than there used to be. You notice that? Which is good. Which is good. It's easier to see light if it's just light. Right? You don't have all the other junk in there. But it's growing increasingly easy to see. Amen? Go to Psalm 133. We'll fit this in. Verse 1 says... 133 verse 1 says, How good and how pleasant. Now if you're in a body of believers and it's not good and it's not pleasant, then you'll know there's some, something missing. Yep. Right? You're not, you're not dwelling together in unity. It's good and pleasant when we... Have you ever noticed that when there's a lack of argument and turmoil, good and pleasant are there? Yeah. Right? How many like good and pleasant? Yeah. Yeah, you, and you don't like... Uh, you don't like turmoil and strife, right? Well, that, that's when you dwell together in unity. Amen? Dwelling to, you can't just have these things. People want to have these things without being who they are. Amen? I don't care how much you bark, you ain't a dog. I don't care how much you sound like a dog, you ain't a dog. Okay? It's just the truth. We're all made to be a part of the body of Christ. And, and we're made to dwell together in unity. Unity is not everybody just singing. It's everybody singing their part. When does the choir sound the best? When they, when they all sing what they want to sing? Or they all sing their part? Right? And it's not even just saying the same words. It's saying the same words in your part. Right? It makes it sound gooder. Right? And that's how we like it to sound, the good us. Amen? It, it's about being the part you're called to be. You can't just say, well, I don't want to be that part. That's the part you are. 
Amen? And in being that part, you will be vital to the body of Christ. Wherever you are, in being that part, you'll be vital to the body of Christ. Go to 1 Corinthians 12. We'll just look at that. 1 Corinthians 12 is right before the love chapter. It talks about being members. Members. And that doesn't mean church members. That means parts. Parts is parts. Use a part. Right? Everybody's a part. Thank you, Lord. Many know the body is designed with the other parts of the body in mind. Right? What, what happens if you walk along and you stub your toe? You go, oh, and you grab it with your hand. Right? And you rub it with your hands and you make it feel better. Right? That's how the body's designed. It's designed to help itself. Right? That's what we're looking for in the body of Christ. It's designed to help itself. It's, it's not designed selfishly at all. You were made for someone else. Yeah. What? You mean I can't just have what I want? Yeah, you can have exactly what you want. What you want is to be made for someone else. The happiest you'll ever be is being who you are in Christ. Right? You'll, you'll get rid of all the me time and the I need a vacation. and <laughs> Well, that didn't go over. Hey. <laughs> There's no such thing as me time in the Bible. You could get some quiet time with God, and that ain't me time, because generally He's going to tell you what you need to do for someone else while you're in your time with God. Well, you just don't understand, brother. I, I need to get away from people. Well, I'm glad Jesus didn't feel that way. Remember when He went off and He wanted to get away quiet, and the people came and He said, I'll let them come. He went ahead and ministered to him, didn't he? Why? Because that's what the love of God does. It's always ready to give an answer for the hope that's within it. It never gets tired. Right? The love of God never gets tired. It doesn't matter how many people you've ministered to that day, one more person can walk up to you, and in the love of God, you can minister to them. You, can, you, can, you don't have to say, you know what? I ministered to 50 people today. I don't have 51 in me. If God brought them to you, you now have 51 in you. That's right. Amen? You got 51. And if He brings you on more, you'll have 52. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 14 says, Now the body is made up. The body is not made up. What am I reading? The NIV? Yeah, read it in the NIV. Now the body is not made up of one part, but of many. We are all one body, but we're many parts. Amen? And so if, if one part says, I don't want to do my part, does that mean that, that God just says, well, you don't need that part? No. no. We're one body, many parts. Your part is as important as anybody else's part. Do you know that Paul chose to stay here because of the part of the body he was. That was what made his choice. He said, it's better for you. He didn't say, I just want to stay. You know what? I haven't been to the Grand Canyon yet. <laughs> right? I haven't seen a pro football game. I, there's a couple of things I want to do. I haven't climbed the biggest mountain. I haven't. No, he said, it's better for you that's how, that's how the body is to think. It's better for you if I work. It's better for you if I do what I do. Amen? Yeah. The body is many people working together to accomplish one goal. One goal. And that is to shine a light to the gospel of Jesus Christ as the body of Christ. Amen? When part of the body is, doesn't feel good and it gets healed, that's that, that shows glory to God to others. Amen? Our part is important. We don't ever want to say, I'm just this or I'm just that. You're a part of the body of Christ. Well, what did it say in the song? It said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper. And so you got people all over the church today that said, I ain't being no doorkeeper. I'm anointed to preach. 
And you want me in the parking lot? Hmm. <laughs> You're anointed to be a part of the body. Find out what part you are and be that part. Amen? And guess who made you that part? God. Is He dumb? Did He not know what He was doing? Did, it, did He one day say, Oh, wow, I made them a foot in their hand. And you know, I'm God, I can't really fix that now. No, if you were a foot once, you're always a foot. How beautiful are the feet? Huh? There's not an ugly part of the body. Why? Because it's all built together to glorify God. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> That's what it says. If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I don't belong to the body. You have people that feel that way. They feel like, you know, I'm just really not accomplishing anything. You know what? Your hand's really glad you got a foot. Your foot's really glad you got a hand. Because guess what? You can't eat with your feet. <laughs> right? You can't write with your feet. There's lots of things that your hands can't do that your feet can, and your feet can't do that your hands can. Anybody walk, tried to walk on your hands for very long? Huh? I don't ever, you know, you rarely see somebody walking down the road and you see there's a guy walking on his hands, he's walking on his feet, and he's doing just as good as this guy. No, the guy on his feet's doing better. Yeah, that's right. Why? Because that's what they're designed to do. Now, you've got people in the body of Christ walking on their hands, but they're not doing as good as they could. That's right. Right? Yes, sir. And, and you've got people that say, you know, you get people say, ah, we don't really need that. You need every part in your church. You need every part in the body. You can't say, I don't need them, and they can't say, I don't need you. And you can't say, I'm not needed. If, it, if it's ever come across your mind, it wasn't God that told it to you. Because He puts you in the part, in the part of the body the way it pleased Him. It made Him happy to make you what He made you. If all you do is encourage people all day long, say, I, you know, all I ever do is get to encourage them. I never get to see anyone saved. I get to encourage them, and then later on I hear they got saved. I don't ever get to pray the prayer with them. You got them there. Whether you were the car that drove them or the person that prayed, who cares? They're going to heaven out because you helped. What if, what if the car wouldn't have driven them there? They wouldn't have got to the person to pray for them. Every part doing its work to accomplish one goal. Amen? That's, that's, what, that's what it's about. It says, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I don't belong to the body. He's wrong. He still belongs to the body, right? If the devil's tried to tell you because you don't do this, you're unimportant, you're wrong. Let me just show, let me just tell you some, some. I did a little bitty study last night. Googled it. Anybody Googled it? Here's some parts of the body that, are, that aren't very well known. Actually, here's one that's really well known, but people probably don't even know why they got it. The eyebrow. <laughs> people say, well, you don't really need your eyebrows. You know, you can get along without your eyebrows. You can. But you know what? They have a purpose. And it ain't just to be looking good, Right? But, but you know what? They are the most expressive part of the body. You can tell whether somebody's crabby. Right? Happy. Right? Excited? <laughs> Eyebrows are important. They also are shaped around the eye in such a way that when you sweat, they're, they're designed to bring sweat away from your eyes. They're also designed to catch dust particles and different things that would get to you. They're there to protect your eyes. Yeah. Glory, to Glory to God. Now with eyebrows, says, yeah, I ain't doing much lately. Well, you're on Dave's body and he hasn't been sweating a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Someday he's going to need you though, so stick around. <laughs> right? <laughs> Anybody ever heard of the hyoid bone? 
I don't know if I'm saying that right or not. But do you know that it, it's the only bone in the body that's only attached by ligaments? And, it, and its only purpose is to help you talk and to help you swallow. It is there to help you talk and help you swallow. If you didn't have it, you wouldn't be doing these things. It supports the muscles that help you to swallow. It, it's there in a supporting cast. No one ever sees it. If they do see it, you're in big trouble. <laughs> right? Because I saw where it is, somewhere right there. And if they see it, you're in trouble. Right? But if it weren't there, you'd have no voice. What if the body of Christ was missing the hyoid bone? It'd have no voice. People say, well, you know, I just sit here and I'm just connected by a couple of ligaments. I'm really not doing much. You're doing a whole bunch. Yeah. The thing is, you're doing what you're designed to do. Therefore, it's not difficult. Just because it's not difficult doesn't mean it's not what you're supposed to do. If you're an encourager, you will find it's very easy to encourage people. You say, well, you know, all I did was talk like I always do. Exactly. And you're an encourager. So when you talk like you always do, people just get encouraged. Right? Anybody ever heard of the, uh, the serratus anterior? Hmm? It's a muscle. Yeah, we all have them. That's what Popeye had, wasn't it? Muscles. Right? I don't know how he got them eating spinach. But... <laughs> this muscle is located in the side of your chest along your ribs, attaches and allows you to rotate your shoulder blade. It plays a vital role when you raise your shoulder to flex your arm. How many like to raise your hands and praise God? You're, you're very glad you have a, ser a serratus anterior. <laughs> Did I sound like a doctor right there? <laughs> I play one on TV. <laughs> how many have heard of the, I would not have any idea how to say this, piriformis? Hmm? It's a muscle also. It's a muscle near your uh, glute gluteus maximus. How about that region? <laughs> That helps, with, that helps with thigh rotation and tends to suffer from overuse. You know why it suffers from overuse? Because other muscles aren't used. So when other muscles aren't used, the body suffers from over, uh, overuse. Did you ever notice that? In the body of Christ, people say, you know, I'm just worn out. I've just been used for this and I've been used for that. Aren't you glad that your body doesn't quit because it's being overused, right? So it tells you to quit sometimes with pain, right? And that's what it says. If you, if you if because of overuse, uh, you'll, you can have back problems and, and uh, it, a weaker lower body performance if this muscle is overused, which it is many times. Amen? Mm -hmm. Th these are little known parts, yeah. but they're very vital, aren't they? Yes. Every part of the body of Christ is vital. None, none are throwaways. Right? You know, your tonsils have a use. Yeah. Your tonsils have it. People say, I don't have my tonsils anymore. God can, get, God can fix anything. But your tonsils had a use while you had them. Your appendix, I don't have an appendix, but an appendix did have a use. People say, ah, it's not necessary. There's lots of things not necessary, but better if you have them. It's, it, you know what? You don't always need all the condiments on your cheeseburger, but it'll taste better if you got them. <laughs> <laughs> this other one's spelled P-S-O-A-S, -S, and it's a muscle that runs through your hip to connect your lower portion of your, of your back to the top of your thigh. You reckon that's important? Yes. You, you hear anybody talking about that muscle all the time? It doesn't matter if you're talked about or not. You're an important part of the body of Christ. It's not about, man... That, Sarah, that, that serratus anterior, man, he did a good job today. <laughs> Woo! You go home from work tomorrow and say, man, my serratus anterior was pumping today. 
No, why? Because the whole body is rejoicing because all the parts did their job. Amen? And they didn't decide because I'm not the part I want to be. Yeah, like we talked about this, you know, you got the flashlight and you got the threads and the threads, they don't want to be threads today. Well, that just don't work, does it? Because they don't want to be threads. Right? And so they decide not to be threads. Well, the batteries, they decide, well, I'll be a battery, but I'm doing it my way. So one goes in like that and one goes in like that. Guess how much light we're getting? None. None. We're all set in the body exactly how it pleased God. You know why it pleased Him? Because it worked. It worked. It did His will. When everything works together, when it doesn't decide, well, we did it this way in our church, so let's turn this battery upside down. Because that's the way we did it in our other church. It doesn't matter how you did it in your other church. (laughs) Well, that offends me. That is a problem. As the body of Christ, we are unoffendable. Did you ever notice if no one makes you mad, you're never angry? Is that, it sounds too simple to be true, but it's just true. If no one makes you mad, you're never angry. And if no one makes you mad, you rarely say bad things. If you just walk around in this days of love, what? Yeah, this days that they call patient kindness. Hmm? That they call not wanting your own way all the time. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what we're designed to do. We're designed to project love, to, to bring love, to shine the light of love, to show the love of God everywhere we go. We must be unoffendable to do that because you will have an opportunity to be offended. Amen? In the church, before you ever get in the world. People say, I know the world offends you. No, you'll get offended right here because we won't do something the way you wanted it done or the way you felt like it should be done. And you'll say, well, you know what? I'm not even going. They'll sit over there. You can put it back together all you want, and guess what? It ain't working. And the light bulb says, I don't care if they do come back. If they come back, I ain't going to be here. (laughs) Get mad at me, will you? Right? And your church is getting smaller and smaller all the time. He says, I can't believe that light bulb gave out on me. I guess I won't come back either. And so the light bulb and the thing that holds the light bulb, they're over here. And the church is still going, but it ain't shining no light. Still got the church there. And these two, they're perfectly joined together, but all the parts aren't there. (laughs) So they pray. (laughs) The light bulb and the little thingy that holds the light bulb, they get back together. They get back together and they say, well, okay. You know, we'll try. We're going to forgive the batteries. <laughs> they weren't right, but we got the love of God in us. And we're going to forgive those batteries right now. We're going to forgive them. And we're coming back to the church. We know we're designed to be here. We know we're supposed to be part of this body. And so they don't have the batteries, but they're in forgiveness. So now they can pray. Because when they were not in forgiveness, they could pray for the batteries all day long. Guess what? The batteries ain't getting no prayer from them because they're not in forgiveness. Once they choose to forgive, an ability of the body of Christ that the world does not have. One th- another thing that gives us commonality. That, is that a word? Yes. Look at me. I'm like a professor today. Huh? Yeah. I am all over this. You know this is the Lord now. I didn't even know that there was a word like commonality. Huh. Man, oh man. So they pray. They forgive. The batteries, man, one day they say, you know, I'm missing that church. And I'm missing what I used to do. Missing my people. Why? Because I love them. Just because you're separate from them and you're mad at them, the love doesn't go away. 
your connection to them, your part doesn't go away. Right? It's because the hand says, I'm not a foot. He, 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 he could say, you know, I remember the, the story of the foot and, and he wanted uh, he, toes. They said, we, we're supposed to be eyes. We know we're supposed to be eyes. We're supposed to be eyes. When, when I, all my life I grew up and I knew I should be an eye. And so one day God made him an eye and all they could do was see the end of the sock. <laughs> Why? Because you can try to change who you are. It won't change where you fit. You can be an eye inside your shoe all you want and you still ain't going to see. So they say we want to be the part that God made us to be. Let's go back to church, huh? Come on, husband and wife battery right here. And guess what? If the wife just goes back, it's not enough. It's good that the wife went back. Don't get me wrong. Good that the husband went back. But now you've got division in your house. That's not really great. But God can fix that. Amen? But they, they both get a hold of it and they go back. And so now they're all together. They're all fitly joined where they belong. And because they are, they now can be the light that God designed them to be. Amen? My little pink flashlight works now. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Because that's what the body's designed to do. And people say, well, what's this little hangy thing down here? It's not doing anything. It's not really important. Guess what? If you don't want to hold on to your flashlight, you got a little hangy thing. Eh? <laughs> Hang around. on you. Every part is important. You may need this hand to do something else, and your flashlight's still hanging there. That's like having a purse without a strap, isn't it, ladies? you got to have a strap. God's joined us all together just the way He likes us. And He said, you're members one of the other. I'm not members because I'm a member of me. I'm a member of you. And you're a member of me. And we're members together of the body of Christ. And we have a love in us that connects us and gives us purpose and value in the earth. And when we come together fitly joined, just like God said. We accomplish what God wills, and people see the light.